It is now, before the waters flood the banks, that the red-headed turtles hatch. Since they're laying in the dry season, many eggs have been lost to predators. But every year there is still a healthy population of new turtles. Now too is the time for other creatures to emerge. This young coral snake is born with highly toxic venom. The timing of their births must be synchronized by nature, for after the floodwaters come, few would survive. It is April, and the water begins to rise quickly now, spilling over the riverbanks and out into the forest. It transforms the landscape. Large schools of fish begin to move out into this new environment. But some species may not relish the new proximity to old enemies. Hatchet fish display a remarkable trait. When pursued by the relentless Takunare, they become airborne. Floodwaters can rise more than 20 feet, giving Bodo dolphins room to explore their expanded horizons. Bodo's surface and their playful antics seem to come to life in the river. Now their echolocation systems will guide them, not through open oceans, but through the maze that is the flooded forest. A magical zone where river and flora become joined as one. Like some strange dream, pink dolphins flying through the tops of trees. The forest can survive months of inundation and will provide its new guests with the food and shelter that are lacking during low water in the sand alone. Orchids, attached to bark near the tops of trees, are now at water level, a retreat for spiders and insects escaping the flood. The arowana fish, or water monkey as it is called locally, takes advantage of the situation. Its special eye structure enables it to see both above and below the water at the same time. Once it spots a meal, it can leap out of the water more than three feet to catch it.
The rising water has threatened the Brazil nuts at the storage area. And two sisters help their father, Anicio, collect the huge load for transfer to their home. They use a special canoe, as their cargo weighs more than a ton. All transportation is now by boat. The village of Floresta has been completely flooded. Water has risen to just beneath the floorboards, and yet more storms still rumble beyond the horizon. Anicio can paddle right into his house. For as many as five months, it will be like this, what the people call a time of famine, for fish are hard to come by as they have dispersed into the forest. But some signs of life are still close by. Tukushi dolphins, unlike the boto, are reluctant to enter the flooded forest tangle of branches and vines. Instead, they remain in open waters and, like the people, must wait for the occasional fish. While Inicio waits at the forest's edge, the dolphins stay in the open, and the two seem to frighten prey into each other's grasp. Along the Rio Negro, people rely heavily on nature, just as they did in the last century, and for many centuries before that. Someday, this way of life may change. For today, the miracle that is called Black River is very much alive. Ah. 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 Ah.